This video is supported by the Internet Society in an effort to assist tribal nations with getting their 2.5 gigahertz licensed networks up and running. Hi there. My name is Christopher Mitchell, and I'm the director of the Community Broadband Networks Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Welcome to a series about LTE networks. We're going to explore everything from why LTE networks are, are really great options for broadband deployment to the basics of building and configuring your own LTE network. So I hope you enjoy this series. Today we're talking about LTE and how it can work in the wireless internet space. Digging into what you need to know about uh, LTE at a really high level. The Evolved Packet Core, the EPC, is a big piece of software you can run on any sort of computer. Like a, um, we run them on these little kind of small protect lead boxes, or they're initially designed to be run on huge servers. But the EPC is software. It's also known as the core, and it's designed to control a huge chunk of the of the network. Like all the base stations have them talk to each other, kind of administer the whole thing, keep it running. The E node B is a very dumb phrase. It's uh, I, we did not know where it came from for a long time. Turns out it's actually French. So it's a base station, but it's a node base in France or in French. And then um, they tacked the E on it. You'll notice a lot of E's because you had the node base, the node B was in 2G. And then when we got up to LTE, it's like, it's evolved, it's LTE. So there's a lot of E's everywhere. Um, so the E node B is the LTE speak ugly word for a cell tower or like a radio. So it's back, you know, nice radio. We've deployed them, we've put them places, you know, it's. Um, in our speak from the language we have having, it's a point to multipoint because it's going to cover a big swath of area. Um, the UE is a generic phrase for user equipment, and that's anything that connects to the network. It could be, um, they often use the phrase handsets when they're talking about cell phones. Um, CPE is another phrase that we've been using a lot in this class, and that's for consumer premise equipment when it's installed. But from the LTE space, from the perspective of LTE, these things are equivalent. You know, someone wants to talk to me and if you're moving, we can handle you. If you're not moving, you're just even easier to handle. <laughs> so um, uh, so all those things are considered uh, user equipment. And then uh, the last bit we have that we're gonna talk about a little bit are SIM cards. We configure the UEs with, by giving them little SIM cards. Uh, for our purposes, this core or the EPC uh, perform two main tasks. They store and manage user data. So subscriber information, keys. Um, we'll talk a lot about that later in the slide deck when we talk about adding users. Um, and then the second task you can think of is it's um, going to connect the LTE part of the network to the rest of the internet. Um, so for you know, you've got a couple of options here, right? You can build or buy an EPC, or you know, you can steal one, right? Whatever the bag or borrow, right? That set of you can obtain one, obtain a core by some method, right? Um, then we're going to go through connecting radios to it, um, adding users, and then getting them online. This is where, so with radios, what's really nice is that the space has become kind of commodified where there's lots of small competitors, which means that you're seeing some bugs, but also it's been bringing down prices. Radios are pretty interchangeable. Um, and so a lot of the names that are kind of flying high right now and running, flying their flag in these projects are actually running uh, what they are, to, to distill them down into how does this fit into this diagram is they uh, run a core network. So there's Bicell's Cloud Core, which is in the cloud, Facebook's Magma, which is kind of hybrid. It's kind of a little bit confusing to me still. There's Open5GS and Colty, which I am affiliated with. Um, there's CN Ranger, there's Next EPC, which is different than both Open5GS and Open EPC. Open EPC is the one of these that is not open source. They just chose that as a name. So I always like to call them out. Um, OAI was a project that is now on its way you know, to the graveyard. Uh, Freedom Phi is a productized version of Magma. Okay, I just like dropped a ton of names and this is all what they do. You can bring your own eNode Bs, bring your own equipment. They're the software core network. So I'm gonna start kind of talking about some of the broad strokes of the differences of these to just like kick this out, right? It's important to mention that I work on Open5GS. Colty was kind of an automated network in a box thing that we built. Um, I also work with Althea on deploying a lot of these LTE networks. Um, this is uh, mostly because I think that all these orgs do really, really great work. I, uh, there's certain orgs that I'm less excited about working with, but uh, transparency is important. And one of the biggest takeaways that I want everyone to have right up front is 
Um, the, um, the eNodeB market used to be kind of vendor locked down, but I mentioned this earlier, there's lots of new players, prices are coming down, interoperability is going up. Um, all the eNodeBs I've worked with are pretty interchangeable. You can point them at different core networks. It should, it's a pretty straightforward process that we'll go through. Um, so it's not, um, I don't want people to feel locked into stuff. Again, I haven't worked with the, the Ranger stuff, so I don't know if that's just a total thing in a box or not. But with that one exception, everything else is, you can say, oh yeah, do this one. Oh wait, this thing sucks, let's run our own. You, like you, people might tell you it only works with this. Like buy sells is really gonna aggressively push that cloud core. You can turn it off if you don't want to. We had a vendor say like, oh, you need the cloud core key. It's like, no, I don't. I'll just like take that off our bill. So like you, you can do that. You don't, don't let them push you around. All right, so where's the core? It could be somewhere in the cloud, right? And you, it just exists somewhere, you know, um, and all the eNodeBs in your network just point to it over the internet. So I say, here's the IP, there it is. The examples of, first example is cloud core. Like, there we go, and magma to a, to a large degree. The other approach is uh, embedded, which is the eNodeB, here's a radio, they're like, it stands alone, it doesn't need any software. And what they mean is we wrote all the software for the core and we put it inside the box. So it just looks like one box, you know, there's maybe two computers next to each other in it. Um, and I guess I did know that because I wrote that for CN Ranger. I was going to say, that's CN Ranger. Um, Blink also sells an embedded EPC as an option. You buy a license, it turns itself on. Very nice. Um, or you can, um, uh, like my style, you can write, take, an, take a core network, you can take the software, run it on a server or a box somewhere, put it in your network, point your uh, eNode bees at that. And that's Open5GS or Colty, or it used to be OAI. And so let's kind of trade this stuff off. Um, so embedded ones, to my understanding, are kind of, I presume that they would work pretty well, I'd like to hope, because they've just worked with one eNodeB, they've tested it, they're not dealing with a lot of the other complications of like, oh God, this e this core is now talking to 10 towers, right? Like it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but these licenses are expensive. I know CN Ranger is a pretty expensive product in the LTE space. Um, the Blink embedded EPC, I think it was costing $500 a year for like a license or whatever their, whatever their number trade-off is. Um, moving down the list, there's the cloud options. They can be harder to set up and work with. I found Cloud Core to be kind of convoluted. I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. And I'm, and I'm getting on the phone with their support multiple times. So how do I add a user? Like, why is this complicated? Come on, guys. Um, definitely cheaper, I think, than embedded EPCs up to a point. To my understanding, Cloud Core is a buck a month a user, a test user. Um, but then the issue of uh, uh, cloud ones is someone else is maintaining it. And maybe you have incentive alignment, maybe you don't, maybe they don't really care about, you know, your networks like going offline at a hard time for you or like, and when it does, it's someone else's domain. You're calling them like, hey, what's the story? And they're like, oh, here's a story. And you're like, when's it going to get online? It's like, ah, you know, when we feel like it or like, maybe I'm being mean. I hear lots of people complaining about cloud core going out at bad times for them. And uh, that's the, the angle dynamic here. Um, and then you can kind of run your own local stuff. It can be really nice if you keep having internet disconnections, backhaul failures, because your whole core is nice and right there, it's still running, but it can be hard to set up. It can be convoluted. It's open source. So you get the support that you're paying for, which is, uh, you know, kind of the battle cry of open source communities. So there's, there's trade-offs here and there's a lot of flaws. Um, and this is a space that's actively evolving. Some more trade-offs that I kind of mentioned on, that I kind of alluded to already. Uh, support, you know, for any given core network provider you're going with. Who can you call? How reachable are they? How responsive are they? Uh, longevity. What if a company fails? Like if you're working with a small startup, like are they going to be around? Are they like, all right, we're closing shop. Like we had our cloud thing. I guess you're done. Or, you know, you could be going with a huge company, maybe Google or Facebook's offering a product, but they sometimes like killing products. Um, so these are concerns, right? Especially when you don't have all your stuff running. Um, something else that is worth talking about is... Um, I kind of alluded to this, that the core connects the LTE network to the internet. All your network traffic is going to go through that core. And it might be encrypted if you're using HTTPS, so that's not like they can see everything immediately, but they're going to glean a lot. Your data is necessarily trafficking through it. So depending on the provider, maybe you have concerns about that. Depending on your network, maybe you're more privacy centric. Maybe uh, you're not. Um, so these are... These are a lot of concerns that you should know about and that you should be able to ask questions on. We kind of talked about a lot of these core options. Um, even if I told you like, these are the guys, it's gonna change really quickly, but we're more than happy to like help pros, concerns, trade-offs, like get people spun up, like on a, what's exactly your needs of your network. 
But the big goals are that I have for, for you guys out here is understanding the designs and trade-offs. Don't get misled or upsold. Like, oh, this is a built-in thing. Like, no, it's not. I just want to connect like my, my cheap Bicelzino B to it. Like, you know, ask them, ask with the way we're talking about these, you have these terms, ask them about it. Like, great. Okay. So this blah, blah, blah. Is this, so this is really just a cloud core. It's up there. The network's being, the data is routed to the cloud. How often does it go down? Oh, this isn't embedded. Like, like don't, um, you know, the goal is to kind of, uh, you can start asking them questions. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, it's just this. Like it's, they're gonna tell you a lot of hand wavy stuff and you start asking them technical LTE questions using uh, this terminology and they're just gonna be like, okay, yeah, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm.